Brooklyn-born rapper Casanova pleads guilty to federal racketeering and drug charges. Casanova's journey to fame stands out like no other in the industry. His life has been a whirlwind of highs and lows, and he's got those lucky stars to thank for it all. But even after getting the golden ticket of a rap career, he kept testing fate, and he took it a bit too far this time. Now, Casanova has been sentenced. Is it a goodbye forever? Casanova's arrest and prison troubles. On December 1st, 2020, the feds put out some social media posts asking for help in finding the 36-year-old rapper Casanova. They wanted him in connection with their 18-person indictment against the untouchable Gorilla Stone Nation gang. The members were charged with racketeering, murder, narcotics, firearms, and fraud offenses. But by December 2nd, they still hadn't caught Casanova, and they started treating him like a runaway. They even sent out a tweet with his picture, telling everyone they were on the lookout for him. We are still looking for Caswell Sr., aka Casanova, in connection with this case, the tweet read. Just a day after that tweet, Casanova, also known as Caswell C.A. Sr., turned himself in at the Midtown South Precinct in Manhattan. Before he turned himself in, there was this video his wife, Swaggy Jazzy, posted on Instagram. It was right before he surrendered to the authorities. In the video, Casanova is smoking a cigarette and telling his wife he'll be back soon. I'm going in, baby, I love you like cooked food. You know, I'm a whole gangster, tough dude. I see you soon. I love you like cooked food. I love you too. In her post, Swaggy stuck to her guns and maintained that Casanova didn't do anything wrong until someone proved he did. She wrote, don't believe everything you see. My husband is innocent until proven guilty. Always remember that, and we're going to fight for his freedom. So the deal is, this Brooklyn rapper, Casanova, whose real name's Caswell Sr., has been sentenced to 188 months in prison, which is about 16 years long on federal charges of racketeering conspiracy and narcotics conspiracy. The month after Casanova surrendered to the police, his lawyer tried to work things out with a judge to get him out of Westchester County Jail. He said Casanova would put up $2.5 million as part of the bond package and agree to some rules. These rules included home detention, geographic restrictions on his travel, electronic monitoring, and the surrender of his passport. Casanova wasn't playing around. He offered five properties and got 13 co-seniors to promise he wouldn't run away. Those properties were worth about $1,103,669, and the folks who stood up for him made around $1,266,145 together. They guaranteed that if Casanova got out, he wouldn't miss his court date should he be released from the West Chester County Jail in Valhalla, New York, where he was being held. But the prosecutors didn't buy it. They laughed at a post that Casanova made on Instagram before he turned himself in. He thought the police were after him because of his successful music career and words. He had a video of him saying goodbye to his wife before going in, but he took it down. They checked his Instagram for proof and said there was a post from a few days before he got caught. It was about a song called Gripped Up, and there was a picture of an assault rifle. They also showed pictures from his iCloud and Instagram with various kinds of handguns and a rifle seated on a couch. They said, while it is incredibly disturbing that the defendant used his now deleted Instagram profile and platform to shamelessly promote a violent street gang. His participation in the untouchable Gorilla Stone Nation enterprise ran much deeper than that. Right up until his arrest, the defendant was in the thick of Gorilla Stone's dangerous and illicit activity. One of the prosecutors, Audrey Strauss, said that. The feds also showed Instagram posts where Casanova's hanging around with bags of branded marijuana like he's dealing drugs. They said he got gang members to sell the narcotics and told them the bags of weed were going for $1,700 a quart. They retrieved these messages from his iCloud history. They also installed a listening device at the Auburn Correctional Facility to listen to Dwight Reed, who is also known as Dick Wolf, the leader of Gorilla Stone, and other gang members talking. During one visit, a co-defendant named Walter Luster told Reed that Casanova once accidentally fired a gun during a poker game in New York. Luster said Casanova always had a gun with him on the streets. They also recorded Casanova talking to Reed. But the prosecutors aren't cool with letting Casanova out. They put out new documents saying why they think bail shouldn't happen. They said he was too dangerous to be out. They also noted that since his associates were committing violent acts, Casanova could make his gang do his dirty work without getting his hands dirty. They didn't like the idea of Casanova being in home detention, as that wouldn't keep the community safe. They thought he might run away because he didn't turn himself in right away when they started looking for him for the RICO case. They even got geolocation data from his phone that showed he dropped it. He didn't surrender right away in Atlanta, where he was when they announced the charges. He only turned himself in after talking with his lawyer and leaving New York for Atlanta. It took him two days to 
give up. Federal officials said that Casanova was supporting Reed and Guerrilla Nation using money he made from his rap career. They also said he set up gang meetings and ran things as a steward, basically the head of the violent group. Even though he was in jail, Casanova didn't seem down. He put up a picture of himself talking to his kids on a video call, and he said, All of my life's problems have one simple solution, a hug from my children. I miss you all. See you all soon. Casanova might be a different kind of rapper from Takashi 6 9 but he's still putting himself in a tight spot as he can't stop snitching on himself. He tried to get out on bail again, but the prosecutors used a video where he said he was still ape in an interview with Nick Cannon. This meant that he was still part of Gorilla Stone, not just a famous face. They also showed a private text where CA said, I'm under Dick Wolf, the godfather of all apes. They thought this proved he had a high-ranking role in the gang. Before his second bail attempt was denied, Casanova was sending out positive messages on Twitter. He said, I always told myself I was never going back to jail. Since I'm innocent, I turned myself in. What would you have done if you was in my shoes? But after the feds denied him bail, he changed his tone on social media. He posted an Instagram video saying, as you already know, I'm fighting serious charges right now, but I'm innocent, that's one. Two, I've been fighting my whole life, so I'll get through this. But just understand how they could get you jammed up. Then he tweeted something that showed he wasn't happy with his situation at all. He said, if you ain't send me no money or check in on me and you supposedly my mans, my and that goes for anybody, the tweet read. A lot of people were guessing that Casanova might start telling on his friends. Back when he was free, he talked about how if someone rich got caught by the feds and they were facing a long time in jail, there was a high possibility that they might start snitching to get out or get a reduced sentence. Talk all that shit. I'm talking about all these rappers and all these fake gangsters, man. You go to the feds for Rico and they offer you 20 years and you're a millionaire. You're telling. He was pretty active on Twitter, and fans of hip hop thought it was just a matter of time before he spilled the beans on his gang buddies. At that time, a guy named Steven Chino Hugh, who was also part of the Gorilla Stone gang, decided to plead guilty to setting up a shooting against another gang in New Rochelle. He could have gotten 25 years in prison, but he decided not to take the risk. This might have made Casanova mad. He could have seen it as a betrayal and decided to show he wasn't going to work with the feds. He also went on Instagram and asked his fans and important friends for help. It felt like this was the end for him. He said he spent a lot of money on paying his legal fees, which hinted that he was running out of cash. This is a public service announcement to all my fans and very important friends. I've been incarcerated for almost one year now, exhausted all remedies, and spent a significant amount of money on legal fees to prove my innocence. The charges against me are false. They don't represent or reflect the person that I am, the caption read. Casanova enumerates the community-based projects and philanthropy that he's been involved with the past few years as evidence of a man who has reformed his mindset. However, Casanova believes they are simply using my past criminal history to crucify me in court. Any help provided will be a blessing because I feel defeated. One's past shouldn't be the reason why you can't afford a successful future. After Casanova pleaded guilty to the charges against him, he talked about how he was treated in jail on his Instagram story. He said they put him in solitary confinement for four months to make him accept the deal they offered. He posted, the system is crazy. They had me in the box for four months for no reason, probably so that I can take this plea. It's hard to tell if he was telling the truth or just acting tough to keep up his gangster image. We might never know for sure. However, it seems like he lost that tough image after he said he wasn't part of the gang anymore. Just a few days before he had his court hearing on June 15, 2023, he was attacked by another prisoner at the Essex County Correctional Facility in Newark, New Jersey, where he was held. After a former New York City rapper who was awaiting sentencing on federal drug charges got slashed in a vicious altercation with another inmate. According to reports, the people in charge at the facility said his face got slashed with a weapon by another inmate named Ulysses Lugo. But Casanova fought back and got help from other inmates. The officers found both of them covered in blood. Others joined the fight too. Inmate Lugo, you couldn't see his face because he was saturated in blood. His whole face was saturated in blood and his whole uniform was saturated in blood, said one of the officers at the scene. Casanova got cut on his face and hands by a weapon they didn't know about and he needed stitches on his face and arm. They say the fight happened because Casanova said he wasn't part of the gang anymore, and that made some of his old friends angry. Casanova is now the 12th person from the Gorilla Stone Nation gang to be punished for being part of the racketeering case, and their sentences range between 3 and 20 years. Five more gang members admitted they did wrong and are awaiting their sentences. Following this attack, Casanova recently shared an update on Twitter from prison, confessing that he is terrified of how loneliness brings me a twisted kind of comfort. Following the news, Casanova tweeted a positive message to his fans. Everything to the chin, nothing to the heart. I get it now. I hope that don't go over your heads. He also, in a post on Instagram,
Instagram revealed the title of his upcoming album, Some Things Cannot Be Taught. They must be experienced. You never learn the most valuable lessons in life until you go through your own journey. He captioned the album's official trailer on Instagram, Trial and Sentencing. Casanova found himself in a tight spot in December 2020. The law was after him, along with his partners in crime, for a bunch of serious stuff like murder, attempted murder, robbery, beating people up, scamming and selling drugs. Even a young kid got killed because of their gang's actions, which made things even worse. This rapper named Casanova didn't have much freedom left after he turned himself into the cops. The charge against him was that he was part of a gang that did all sorts of illegal things. Big trouble, you know? The indictment contained 16 charges for various crimes committed in Poughkeepsie, Peekskill, and New York City. When they first told him what he was accused of, he said he didn't do any of it. He's looking at a life behind bars, but he's sticking to his story that he didn't do anything wrong. His lawyer talked to the media and said he denies any of the charges to the extent we can even understand them. Here's a man who surrendered in a case for which he's looking at life in prison, which is consistent with the act of an innocent man. The lawyer also went further, saying that Casanova never planned to run from the law at any point. He said that from the moment Mr. Caswell was informed of this indictment and the gravity of the charges, he had every intention of voluntarily surrendering to the authorities. He was never on the run. All he intended was a peaceful surrender. He respects the judicial process and is confident that he will be exonerated. But there's more. This rapper was also charged with hitting a young woman and robbing her while she was recording him at a fancy diner in Greenwich Village. And then there was a shooting that happened at a place called Kings of Diamonds on a day in October 2020. His lawyer, James Kusuros, knew this was coming. He said the government had told them that they were going to add more charges to the list. Kusuros told XXL that they knew that the feds were going to do this. He also said that they had been privately investigating the incident charge for months, and Mr. Senior is ready to fight these charges in court. He didn't run away or hide when he found out about the charges last year. He's ready to face the music and show he's not guilty. So, yeah, Casanova's got a lot on his plate, but he's saying he didn't do any of it and is willing to fight it out in court. When it came to the trial in court, things got serious for the rapper. If he's found guilty of that racketeering conspiracy and other charges, he might end up spending the rest of his life in prison. This isn't the first time the Gorilla Stone gang has been in trouble. Back in 2015, the police arrested 17 alleged members of the gang and its subset Blackstone Gorilla Gangsters. They were accused of planning violent stuff with guns and selling drugs like crack, cocaine, and ecstasy throughout Co-op City and Castle Hill in the Bronx. Brooklyn-born rapper Casanova pleads guilty to federal racketeering and drug charges. The U.S. Attorney's Office claims Casanova led the untouchable Gorilla Stone Nation Bloods Gang and directed a multi-state conspiracy in that role. Although CAs initially maintained his innocence, he pleaded guilty to counts of racketeering conspiracy and narcotics in connection with his leadership role in the untouchable Gorilla Stone Nation Bloods Gang in May 2022. It was like he realized he messed up something good. He was all alone, back in a place that had hurt him before. His gang buddies were making deals with the law, which made him look even more like the bad guy. Even someone who used to think getting into trouble was fun had reached his limit. He knew this was the end. After 12 of his gang members took deals, he decided to stop pretending to be tough. He understood he was in big trouble. During his guilty plea, he admitted to being part of this whole gang thing and being involved in distributing between 100 to 400 kilograms of marijuana. He even confessed to being part of a robbery back in August 2018. He said he sold marijuana to make money during the pandemic, but he wanted to be clear that he didn't share the money with his gang. He even admitted to being part of a robbery in New York that left a woman injured pretty badly. He also said he was involved in shooting a guy at a party in Florida because they fought over a poker game in July 2020. According to what people said, he ended up accepting the plea deal from the prosecution because someone snitched on him and told the court he was involved in those crimes. Assistant U.S. Attorney David Felton talked about Casanova being seen next to a large quantity of marijuana in a social media post. Someone also said they saw Casanova getting shipments of large quantities of marijuana delivered to him. Felton even said messages were showing Casanova was in the Gorilla Stone Nation gang, and one member said the rapper always had a gun on him. They also accused Casanova of shooting a gun during an argument over a poker game. Felton added that Gorilla Stone members saw Casanova and his rap career as a way to make money and increase their status among other blood sects. Just a short while before the unfortunate incident happened to him in prison, Casanova reached out to Judge Philip Halpern. He wanted the judge to know that he was cutting ties with the untouchable Gorilla Stone Nation gang, and his focus had shifted towards his music and his family. In a heartfelt letter, he even shared that he had lost his father to cancer and had experienced moments where he contemplated taking his own life. Surviving on Rikers Island and upstate correctional facilities was not easy with racial and gang tension and violence at its height. 
he said. Fast forward two years from his initial arrest due to his involvement in gang-related crimes connected to racketeering. Casanova found out what his prison sentence would be. While he could have faced up to 60 years behind bars, he was hoping the judge would show him some leniency because he had renounced his ties to the gang and genuinely felt remorse for his actions. U.S. Attorney Damian Williams didn't hold back when he described Caswell Sr., a.k.a. Casanova. He wasn't just a well-known recording artist, but also a prominent leader of a vicious street gang. According to Williams, Casanova's influence attracted gang violence. Williams noted that at a packed house party in Miami, Casanova personally fired a gun, causing severe harm and possibly even death. He also said that further, senior stature in the community was central to Gorilla Stone's successful recruitment and nationwide expansion. Today's sentencing, along with the other significant sentences that have been imposed in this case, shows once again that gang life is not worth it and will lead to many years in prison. Casanova's legal team argued that he deserved a much lighter sentence. They contended that he wasn't actively involved in the gang's daily activities anymore. As his music career gained traction, he began to distance himself from the gang, even making public statements denouncing that way of life. Casanova's lawyers clarified that he had remained in the gang for the sake of his music career. As he achieved some success and secured a recording contract with Rock Nation, he gradually separated himself from the gang's activities, even though he technically remained a member. His attorney, James Kusuros, fought for a more lenient sentence, asserting that Casanova's public renouncement of his ties to the Gorilla Stone Nation gang put his life in danger. Despite these pleas, the judge ultimately sentenced the rapper to over 15 years in prison to fame and initial trouble. Caswell Sr., the real name behind the stage vibe of Casanova, a rapper from the U.S. who's thrown some major impact into the music scene with his tunes that just stick in your head and stories that feel like they're coming straight from the street. But let me tell you, his journey to the limelight wasn't a walk in the park. He had to face some really tough times and spend a long time behind bars. And guess what? His music career is kind of hanging by a thread now because he's caught up in some gang trouble again. So Casanova was born and brought up in Brooklyn, New York on October 20. 7, 1986. He's got a mix of Jamaican, Haitian, and Panamanian roots, which is pretty cool. But he didn't exactly grow up in a cozy setting. It was more like a rough neighborhood where you'd see stuff you wouldn't want to see and hear things you wouldn't want to hear. And when he was just 11, he started snatching stuff from people in New York. Now, most folks who go down that path would probably be like, yeah, I did it, but it was messed up, but not Casanova. He had this super odd way of looking at it. In an interview with Vlad TV, he admitted that he thought robbing people was fun. He found a thrill in diving into risky situations. Trouble seemed to be his best buddy, and man, he was a handful. From throwing eggs at people during Halloween to grabbing flowers from businessmen on Valentine's Day, I guess he didn't have much of a remorse button back then. He dropped out of school in eighth grade and joined a gang called the Untouchable Gorilla Stone Nation, which is said to be affiliated with the Bloods. According to Casanova, growing up in the neighborhood, the biggest deal for any regular kid was being cool and fitting in with with the other kids. And the only ticket to fitting in was building solid street cred. And how did he get that reputation? Well, by doing things that were not exactly textbook behavior, like snatching stuff from people. In Casanova's world, being accepted meant being a little mischievous. The funny thing is, even though his mom was down to hook him up with whatever he needed, he was still envious of what his friends had. He looked at his buddies, who got their stuff by grabbing things from people, and felt a pang of jealousy. As he got older though, things started changing. Those crimes that used to be a thrill and made him feel like a big shot, they started losing their shine. So what did he do? He took it up a notch. He graduated from small time snatching to, well, jumping people at night and taking their money. And you know what? His street cred got a boost when he managed to dodge the cops a few times. But like all things, there's a flip side. Soon enough, the law caught up with him. And by the time he was 13, he found himself in jail. And that was just the beginning of his many rounds behind bars. Now here's where things usually go a bit differently for most folks. A bit of jail time can be like a reality check like a nah, this ain't worth it moment, but not for Casanova. Jail made him more excited about doing bad stuff. Weird, right? He even joked that jail was fun, though he did admit later in interviews that it was far from it. But he got a kick out of the attention he got and the reputation he built. The jail was also like a training ground for him. Casanova's time in juvie was far from a picnic. He had to survive through some seriously nasty situations, even getting into fights organized by the correctional officers. He ended up gaining respect from the bullies there. People were mistaking him for a crip even though he hadn't officially joined any gang at that point. This was where his journey into gang life began in juvie. The Bloods welcomed him in. When he finally got out, he was on another level, basically the big shot in Flatbush. But he wasn't just the top dog because he was tough. He had to put in the work. From pulling off robberies to taking shots at rivals, he was always ready to go above and beyond. Things got so intense that some of his buddies didn't even want in on his wild adventures anymore, thinking he was pushing it too far. 
Casanova's teenage years were all about robbing people and dealing with the jail hustle. He was so fearless that he didn't even bother covering his face when he pulled off his crimes. Did his time behind bars and the harsh realities he faced there turn him into a heartless machine? not caring if he got nabbed, or was it just the adrenaline rush he craved from doing dangerous stuff? Either way, one thing's clear. He became bolder and more creative with his illegal adventures. He began to rob people and then actually pose for pictures with them at clubs. No mask, no shame. He'd shockingly put those pictures up on social media for the world to see. By the time he hit 18, he was caught red-handed for robbing a check cashing place of $7,500 and got a one-way ticket to Rikers Island, one of the meanest jails out there. Casanova and his friends were all chilling, thinking about how to splurge on the loot they scored when the cops knocked on their door. There and then, Casanova knew his date with the NYPD had arrived. But before they could slap the cuffs on him, he had the genius idea to toss his gun out the window. The problem was that one of the officers caught it midair. Now there's something else that might have fed into Casanova's criminal activities. His mom. She had the money, and she'd always bail him out. Casanova always knew he wouldn't be stuck behind bars for long because his bail would always be sorted. And you know what's even wilder? His mom had no clue he was knee deep in crime. She believed her son was an innocent little boy. He had everything he needed and moms, well, their love can be a bit blinding when it comes to their kids' flaws. Casanova was a pro at feeding her lies and getting away with them. As expected, after they both got arrested, he was out on bail and back to his usual routine. But here's the twist he didn't see coming. His buddy sold him out. Yeah, his partner in crime cut a deal with the cops. The deal was a short six-month probation for him, while Casanova got the tough end of the stick, eight years behind bars. In his last heist at a check cashing spot, his buddy accidentally ended up locked inside as he tried to swipe a safe. Lucky for Casanova, he was long gone by then. The store owners weren't so kind to his buddy. They roughed him up. Just three days after this caper, the bond from a previous case was revoked. Next thing, he was cuffed up while attending a court hearing. I bet he had a hunch they had enough dirt on him to not even bother resisting arrest. Casanova's life was heading towards a long stretch behind bars. But then his lawyer threw him a choice that was hard to turn down. See, the rapper was staring at a possible 25-year jail sentence for those two robbery cases. Now, for the second one, there wasn't so much evidence, which meant he might just get away with it. At that time, Casanova's girlfriend was carrying his child. He had a choice. He could either see his little one when she was a kid or when she was all grown up and tying the knot. He grabbed the plea deal and ended up serving eight years in jail. But let me tell you, life inside was no walk in the park. During those eight years, he faced some harsh conditions and fought all the time. He even got tight with his cellmate, who turned out to be the rapper ASAP Rocky. And guess what? That friendship would later shape Casanova's future in music. When he got out of Rikers Island, you might have thought he'd choose a different path. He went back to his old ways. Thankfully, his old buddies had left the criminal life behind, having seen their friends locked away. They were on a different track now. And here's something interesting. His mom wasn't treating him like a kid anymore. She told him to get a job, but that wasn't Casanova's vibe. With his his crew not down for store robberies anymore, he turned to gambling. Lucky for him, he was winning pretty often, and he was slowly picking up the pieces. But life took a turn. He ended up back in Rikers Island just two months after getting parole. And get this, he was arrested for a robbery he didn't even commit. That's when it all hit him. The reality of his life choices finally sank in. He knew he didn't want to be around criminals anymore. He wanted something different. And once he was out again, he didn't waste time. He grabbed a job as a construction worker with the local 79 union. Fast forward to 2014. That's when he got serious about his music dreams, he started making tracks and posting them on YouTube. Plus, he had some backup from none other than ASAP Rocky, who introduced him to big names in the industry. Then came the big moment in 2016. His original song, Don't Run, hit the scene. It captured the vibe of street life and the struggles of someone who'd been on the wrong side of the law. The track was a hit, catching the ear of Memphis Bleak, a rapper connected to Jay-Z. Bleak spotted Casanova through his label, Warehouse Music Group, which is under Jay-Z's Rock Nation. By October 2016, Casanova was officially signed with Warehouse Rock Nation, stepping into the spotlight as one of the hottest new artists. He kept the music coming. Singles like Line Me, The Old 50, Go Best Friend, and Left Right. Collaborations followed with artists like Young M.A., Fabulous, Dave East, Don Q, Chris Brown, g Easy, Rich the Kid, A Boogie with Day Hoodie, and Mozzie. And in 2018, he dropped his debut EP, Commissary, featuring some of those aforementioned artists. The hustle was real, and so was the success. Casanova's music journey was like a rocket. His unique style and charm won over fans, and he even got to hit the stage alongside big names like Chris Brown, 50 Cent, French Montana, Fabulous, OT Genesis, and Cap G. His talent also got him nominations for awards like the BET Hip Hop Awards and the Soul Train Music Awards. Things were looking up for him until a major setback hit him on December 1st, 2020. 
That day marked the start of a nightmare. Casanova got pulled into a RICO case, something you don't want to mess with if you're tied to any gang stuff. But here's where things get really serious. He was indicted in December 2020 on federal charges that were no joke. He was accused of being the top dog in the untouchable Gorilla Stone Nation gang, which was supposedly involved in some terrible activities. It was a 16-count indictment that included the murder of a minor. The U.S. attorney even said that a minor was murdered in furtherance of the gang's activities. One of the gang's members, Brandon Soto, also known as Stax, was accused of driving someone to kill a 15-year-old boy. This happened on September 21, 2020. The young victim, Jelani Jones, was shot in the head and tragically lost his life. Surveillance footage caught the brutal moment. A person in black, face covered, walked up to the teenager with a bike and shot him in the head. The shooter then bolted across the street. The poor kid was taken to the hospital but couldn't make it. Now, while Casanova wasn't directly involved in the murder, Brandon Soto was heavily tied to this case. Soto didn't pull the trigger that day, but he did give a firearm to a minor, knowing they might use it for a violent act. Casanova was in a hot spot. Even though he wasn't part of the murder, being associated with this gang was bad news. The legal storm was brewing, and it was far from over. The federal authorities had a strong hunch that the shooting of Jones was connected to the gang's shady activities. This led to a big investigation that eventually took down the untouchable Gorilla Stone Nation blood gang, proving that they weren't as untouchable as they thought. Casanova couldn't keep away from the criminal scene. Did he forget the horrors he faced in Rikers Island's hole, or the promise he made to leave the criminal world behind? behind after being wrongly locked up for a robbery he didn't commit. Well, it seems like he didn't quit being a criminal. The only change was the type of crimes he was into. He'd moved on to fraud and drug trafficking. The gang had been in the game for at least 10 years. They were running their show across different parts of New York City, like Manhattan, the Bronx, Queens, and Brooklyn, as well as Westchester and some parts of upstate New York. Two gang members were accused of using other people's IDs to file fraudulent applications for COVID-19 related unemployment benefits. The acting U.S. attorney, Audrey Strauss, said in a statement to Daily News that members of the Gorilla Stone have committed terrible acts of violence, trafficked in narcotics, and even engaged in brazen fraud by exploiting benefits programs meant to assist in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. Casanova got hit with an attempted murder charge on top of his federal racketeering case. The incident went down at King of Diamonds on October 24, 2020. Casanova and his co-defendant Jarrett J.C. Chrysler Jr. were at the club, and CAs threw up a gang sign that rubbed a rival gang member the wrong way. This guy shouted, yo homie, wrong sign. Casanova allegedly reacted to the man's comment by responding, you wanna die tonight? Things escalated and both Casanova and Chrysler were accused of shooting the rival gang member and another person. The victims ended up in the hospital with bullet wounds. Cops found texts on Chrysler's phone where he bragged about the shooting. Both Casanova and Chrysler got hit with charges of attempted murder and assault with a dangerous weapon, all tied to racketeering. Casanova also got charged with getting physical and robbing a young woman who was filming him at a diner in Greenwich village in August 2018. The legal storm just kept getting bigger. He seemed to believe a woman took a picture of him from her booth, so he grabbed her phone forcefully. Then, a member of his gang crew came up from behind, put her in a headlock, and she passed out due to a lack of air. After more than two years behind bars waiting for his fate, Casanova finally got his sentence on June 27, 2023. Considering he was potentially looking at 60 years, the verdict of 188 months, which is less than 16 years, might seem like a slight relief. Casanova's life is like a roller coaster. He went from prison to music stardom, but he also got tangled up in his past and his choices. His dreams came true, but his freedom slipped through his fingers. Now he's facing a long stretch in jail where he'll have to navigate a harsh environment. The challenges are real. Hostile surroundings, losing his music career, and being away from his family. It's a tough road ahead, and that is it for this video. If you want to see more content like this, click on the cards on your screen.